All right. All right, you guys. We have a, quite a, a little bit of a delay today, but we're hoping for a good stream today. We had some work done um, on our internet connection, so we're hopeful. Anyway, um, welcome to the studio today. I'm so happy to have you with, um, with us. I uh, really, really, really appreciate you um, being here. I hope you all had a good Thanksgiving day yesterday. It was definitely a, a weird one, right? Um, mine started off on Wednesday. I went to New Seasons. I had ordered a meal for my mom and I, which we were going to have um, apart from one another. And I go to New Seasons and, you know, you do the curbside pickup of the meal. And I got my tidy little box and I walked the couple of blocks back to my car because um, it was kind of crazy and I wanted to avoid the parking lot. So I, you know, walked back to my car, put the tidy little box in my car and something made me open that box up and look inside. <laughs> and sure enough, there's no turkey in there. <laughs> so I had to walk back to New Seasons and get back in line and... And anyway, I got my turkey, and so it was kind of crazy. And I, uh, yesterday, I prepared a plate for my mom, took it to my mom's place, left it on her patio, came back to my place, made my plate, and then we did a FaceTime uh, uh, g gathering together. So that was, you know, it's so odd. I'm sure lots of other people, I'm, many of us, most of us did the same type of odd, strange thing, but it worked out well. It was a really nice day. Um, I did that, spent lots of time on the phone with friends, um, painted, spent some time working with my team, and that was really great too. Always enjoy it. And so, yeah, so it was um, kind of a crazy, crazy uh, Thanksgiving. But that's what this year has been like, right? <laughs> it's been kind of odd and difficult. And being cooped up like we are, um, in my opinion, there is some opportunity there um, if we really dig our heels in and use this time to really make um, and set goals and use this time where we don't have that um, distraction, we can really make some improvements to our painting practice. And I think that that's really wonderful. We can really make those strides I'm really determined to do that for myself and to make this time count for something. And I want to help you guys do that too. I want to help you do the same if you're inclined. So in addition to my new course, Color College, that we just released, which is for all artists, anybody that's got color in their life, I wanted to bring my very best sale ever for this Black Friday um, that we're today, starting today. I really want to show my gratitude to all of you guys, all my students, um, without whom I, I couldn't be doing all this. This is amazing, and I'm so grateful for it. It's so wonderful and so fun. So I really want to thank you. So I want to talk about the sale a little bit and tell you a little bit about how it works. So everything is on sale right now for the lowest prices that we've ever offered since we started doing this. So make sure you check out the Black Friday link below to see all the details. We're giving everyone a coupon code for $23 off any order. And so please note, this is only good for one purchase. So figure out what you want, one purchase per customer. And it can't, but it can't be used on the new Color College because we've, it's our, that's already discounted. It's really already a really, really good price on Color College. But it can be used on all 11 of our workshops and the monthly membership subscription. So let me just briefly tell you about how it works for the monthly um, membership subscription, monthly pastel painting lessons online. So as you might know, we, we, right now we have two years of content, and that includes 25 sessions, hundreds of hours of video, I think over 1,000 pages in the study guide, which is crazy when I think about it. Um, so that is like a gym membership. So you have access to everything in the gym. 
um, for as long as you're a, a pain member of the gym. So I set this up to be the foundation of any pastel painting practice. Um, and it includes new features like the monthly mileage training, which every month you get like a little, little prompts on staying creative and, and just little exercises. And that's in addition to the lessons. And we also do a really in-depth, what we're called super stream every month, which is, goes above and beyond what we do here for the free um, streaming lessons. Um, and they have an extended um, Q&A at the end. So, so that's all included. And for the yearly subscription, there's a coupon code for $70 off the already reduced price. So it's a really great time to sign up for that. And we won't have another offer like that again this year. Um, but please note that this is only for new subscriptions and it can't be used for renewals. Um, and it only applies for the, to the first year. So we really want to encourage people to sign up. Now, please understand we can't refund for any purchases that you might have already made prior to the sale. We just can't do that. Um, and additionally, we have a coupon for monthly subscribers. If you pay monthly, you'll get two months for free, which is essentially you get to try it before you buy it. Um, but the advantage of monthly, of course, over, uh, of yearly over the monthly is that it's overall less money. Um, and the yearly people get access to everything and you can skip around and go do whatever, whatever you feel like. Um, but the monthly people only get two sessions at a time. Okay, so I hope to see some new faces there in, in all the workshops on all the, so each, each workshop and the monthly has its own um, private Facebook group, members only access. So I hope to see you guys on there and posting if you do Facebook. Uh, and um, I love seeing what everybody's doing. And the sale is going to be just for over three weeks. So check out the Black Friday page. Um, fill up your stockings because this is a good time you get, you get a really good deal on everything. Uh, it's going to be really a lot of fun. We, we also have, um, we have some really fun stuff planned for the holidays coming up um, next month. Uh, I'm, I'm really, I'm really kind of excited about it. Um, so be sure to sign up for the free mini lessons on paintinglessonswithmarla.com to really be able to take advantage of all the fun stuff that we have coming up. So just a little, a little hint about that. All right. Now, Color College. Um, I just need to toot my own horn a little bit about Color College before we get going on today's lesson. lesson. I had an amazing instructor at, in art school. I went to uh, Art Center College of Design, which is an amazing art um, college known for industrial design, um, automotive design, illustration, photography. It was an amazing school. And so everybody at Art Center had to take Judy Crook's color class, everyone. And she just brought like this really amazing perspective on color um, to all the students. So anybody that took her class just made this shift in their thinking about color. And so, you know, I was completely influenced by Judy Crook. And I wanted to bring that to my students. So Color College is really based on Judy's teachings. So if you want that amazing shift and more confident, bolder color consistently in your work, you need Color College. <laughs> so check it out. Um, all right, so on to today's lesson. It's really a fun one. Um, I always ta love taking these kind of oddball uh, reference photos and turning them into paintings. Um, and this one's pretty odd. <laughs> <laughs> I shot this um, photo reference uh, right outside my front door on an evening when we had a big, one of those big moons. I don't know whether it was a harvest moon or a blue moon we had recently, but the moon was huge. And um, so I just took out my, my iPhone and shot off a couple of shots of it. Didn't really think I would get much, but um, I was really amazed at how much color the iPhone actually captured. And so when I saw that, I was like, okay, 
kind of struck me that maybe I can make a painting out of this. Um, so that's, that's what we're going to work with today. So Kevin, there's a shot of what that looks like in daylight. I think I, so you could put that up too, so people can see. Okay, yeah, so that's what that scene looks like in the daylight. So that's kind of crazy. Um, and so I'm, I, I'm, I'm probably not going to refer to that very much, but maybe a little. I'm also going to refer to this piece. Can you move up to this one, Kev? Thanks. So this little painting is actually from one of the lessons that's in the monthly pastel painting lessons. It's actually a, in the bonus lesson. So whether you're monthly or yearly, you, you actually get this lesson right away, both, both monthly and yearly. And um, I really, it's kind of an interesting, unique image. Um, but this lesson piece is going to help me, give me information. You know how I always talk about, I always have stuff around me that helps me to do whatever, uh, whatever problem I'm going to solve. If I've already solved it, I'm going to draw upon that information from other pieces that I've done. And this one is a good example of that because this one has some... Um, similarities to what I'm going to paint today. So specifically that like big moon and that kind of corona around the moon. Also this foliage in the in the tree is kind of similar to what some of what's going on here. So um, I like that. Also in this one I've definitely pushed the saturation in the sky, you know, given it much more um, in um, much more color and, and saturation, and I think that I'm probably going to want to do that in this one today as well. So um, yeah, so I think it's going to be super fun. I'm going to get started. Um, the other thing that I want to um, talk about today a little bit. So people always ask me, what sizes? What size are you going to work at? And today I'm going to work at 11 by 13, and I'm going to measure it out. Oh, I've got to get my, my um, straight edge, actually. I'm going, to put, I'm going to put this up here so I can look at it. Um, oh, I need the measuring thingy. <laughs> a ruler. I need a ruler. <laughs> is there a ruler laying around? I had one out here. There it is. Thank you much. Thank you, Kevin. Okay, so let me tell you why I'm going for 11 by 13. And it's very practical. And the reason is this. 11 by 13 fits in this priority mailbox. Because I'm hoping that I'm going to sell the painting today, right? And I know that sounds, you know, I don't know, maybe it's a little like self-serving or whatever, but it's true because you guys probably know what, if you've, if you've, um, been at this a while and you've shipped paintings to friends or family and sold things you know, when you want to make it easy. So I've, d I've done these live streams and the lessons for you guys and I've not paid attention to the size of the box and made an extra chore for myself because I made it like an inch larger and that's silly. So today I just thought ahead a little bit and so it's going to fit in this box. So that's really good. So I'm going to measure. There's no reason it shouldn't be, right? So here's 13. And there we go. That's not, yeah, this is it. 13. I will. I'll put, my, I'll put my hair up. And there's 11. So, and I have my nice area. I'll give it a little bit of extra space. I have my nice area to make my marks on, and that's uh, about the proportion I want anyway. So that's good. All right, and here's my guy, and I have a hair band in here to put my hair up. I'm wearing my Thanksgiving colors today. <laughs> and. Uh, 
Yeah, I'm happy to be out here painting. I'm also, um, I've been remiss in, in doing my head painting, head drawing, and I'm getting back into that. And I spent some time yesterday in my um, kind of newly, newly imagined painting space out in my garage, and that was fun. All right. So this, um, this reference photo, it's, it's so oddball. There's um, a car here and in, the, in this driveway, and these little boom, 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 um, little... Uh, they're boxwoods, I guess. I don't want those boxwoods in there. I don't like them in my yard as it is, so I'm not going to even put. I'm not going to put them in the painting. These are actually in my yard. Um, I am going to put this, this kind of red sort of foliage mass in there, and uh, I'm going to keep this really simple and dark and. Here's my neighbor's house. My neighbor's house sits right here. What's up? Uh oh. Oh. And the, my neighbor's driveway has an extra car in it here, and I'm I'm gonna try to see if I can eliminate that. It's all it's really dark, obviously. There's a car. His his back of his truck sitting here. Oops, it's it's over here a little bit more. I don't need to get it perfect. And then there's this other, this is my tree also in my yard. This is a maple. He's got wood right there. This is, this is in my yard, so I know it comes down. And remember, try not to block the image. If you oh, block yeah. the image too much, you're going to have to admit what kind of music you listen to. That'll be the... Oh, is that right? Yeah. I don't want to do that. Okay, then don't block the image. <laughs> no one wants to know what music I listen to. They Honestly, they don't want to hear it. Don't. Okay, so then, let's see. Let, let's go ahead and get um, this this guy in here a little bit. There's this really interesting glow right there. I think I want that in my painting. It's really kind of funny. I think I'm also going to put the telephone cords in this one. Now, one thing, right now I've got this moon. It's like right smack dab in the center. That's not that in interesting. So I want to move it over. So maybe this gets diminished a little bit. We'll see. I want to move it over a little bit. All right, and then there's a tree line back here. This is the red tree. This is, this tree comes just, it's actually almost as high as the moon. So there are these layers. There's this layer, this tree, this tree. Then there's this red, which is really taking up a lot of the space here. There's this fence right here. Maybe it might be cool to put some kind of fence thing, but I'm not going to put a solid. Maybe maybe it's more something like that. I don't know. I'll I'll see when I come to it. I'll figure it out. Then there's the telephone wires, which I don't really need to say yet. They're these really interesting cloud shapes. I'll maybe angle those in a little bit more. Anyway, 
And it's pretty fun. Um, I like the composition, the house, the moon, the trees, this little light. It's, it's pretty, pretty neato. All right. Neato, that's a very technical art term. Okay, let's see. I want some dark red. I'm going to start with this. Yeah, it's not, it's not, that's not that interesting, but let's see. I don't know. Maybe I want something a little more. I'll see. I, I'm just going to get something in there for now and see how I feel about it. Some, get some dark underside to this. So this is a really um, good example of a really low-key nocturne. This one is also this kind of red. Already, okay, so what's really kind of cool, like already you can see the layer, you can feel the depth. This is coming forward, the house is back there. And that's, you know, already pretty cool. So I'm just getting a few things in here just to set myself up. Okay, now this, this shape right here, this tree line, it's kind of interesting. It's kind of got like a gray, grayed feel to it. Just a little bit because there's sort of light that might not be dark enough, but we'll see. I'm going to see. More, more like this. This will do it. I love this kind of thing because it's, it's like not, it's interesting. It's not expected. This guy. Actually, as I'm working on this, I, I'm kind of coming to the conclusion that I don't want to make the sky that bright. I like this kind of lavendery, silvery feel to that sky, and I think that it would not really work to have the sky that intense. So I'm just changed my mind. So hey Marla, I'm gonna take a quick second here and put a new card in this camera. So we're okay. gonna have a little bit of a blackout, I think, right. maybe. Maybe not. Nope, we're good. Alright. What happened? Oh, um, there was no card in the camera, so it went on auto shut off for a second. Oh, uh, yuck. No big deal.
all this technical stuff that we have to navigate. Kind of. I'm glad I don't have to do it alone. All right. Okay, coming over here, there's this interesting kind of green glow. That's cool. It's a little much right now, but I think it'll work out when, by the time I get the rest in. I think it'll be fine. The roof. So Marla, can you mm -hmm. talk for a second when, um, when you pack your pastels? It's not too fancy of a process, right? I mean, you just kind of put them in glassine and then put them in the, bo in the box there or? Oh, when I, when, oh, a, a, a finished piece? Yep. Oh, yeah, um, when I, no, it's not too fancy of a process. So when I'm packing them up, I'm gonna um, put, um, put a piece of glassine over it. I'm gonna put two pieces of foam core and um, put it in whatever, you know, shipping box. And they stay really good that way because they're sandwiched together and they're not moving around, so they're fine like that. The problem is when they're when they're scooching around on one another um, on, on on something, then that's when you know you get into a problem. Let's see, I want something for the back of this vehicle. Now see that? That's the car. That's the, that's the, ba that's that. That's all it is. It's all, it does, it doesn't need, even need to be anything more than that. And I might not even do very much more than that. Um, and it's not perfect, it's just there. But it, it's, when I get these other elements in there, it will be enough of a suggestion of it. Um, and, you know, literally it was one mark like that, like that, like that, right? That's all it was. Yeah, and we just thank everyone for the super chats. Oh, That's yeah. That's really nice. Thank you very much, you guys. Looks like Roger Thompson dropped 20 bucks. Oh, Roger. <laughs> Do that, Roger. <laughs> That's nice, Roger. Oh boy. He says it's tuition to your college. He needs oh yeah, he needs my color college. Yeah. Uh, he also needs a dorm room as well. <laughs> <laughs> Did he say that? He said that, yes. Okay, well I think he's got his own dorm. Yeah. Always having fun around here. Oh, I'm having too much fun. Too much fun. Roger, that that could be a very suggestive comment. <laughs> Another quick question, uh, getting back to business here. Um, Very good. Is it better slash safer to pack the paintings unmatted? Um, I think so. I don't think that 
Yeah, I think so. The mat could get um, messed up pretty, you know, that I could see that as being a problem. I don't, I don't ever put the mat on there when I'm shipping them. I'm just trying to get but a little bit of something in the house. I don't need to, to do a whole lot. Okay, that's all I'm doing for now in the house. I'm going to come back to it. All right, now, how about that sky? That sky, this, this right in here, it's so interesting, so much color. Okay, I'm looking at what I did here. I looks like I, on this one, on the moon, I put a little corona of light, a, a little bit warmer yellow and a little bit whiter in the center. But this one, it feels like it's even more complicated. It's got, it, I, I see some yellow, also some orangey pink, and then it kind of comes out to this silvery color. So I kind of want to try to get that. Um, deciding on what that's going to be. Hmm. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not positive what I want to do. I'm going to start there. Picking a couple things that I think are going to work for the sky. Let's see. And can you remind us um, when you went over that, when you had the video where you went over the books on color? Um, do, do you remember offhand? It, of course, it was the Betty Edwards book. Yeah. And yellow and blue don't make green. Is that what the book is called? Yellow. Yeah, I think it's yellow and blue don't make green. That's another really good one. Um, it was uh, Michael Wilcox. Also, you could get Color College, and I'll tell you all about it. <laughs> Kind of playing with this, working at it. Not sure exactly what I want to do here. That's crazy, but isn't, it's probably going to look good when it gets done. Pressing pretty hard now. Interesting. Okay. Now, now I got to start getting that gradation out. So that's that's hard. That's where it gets hard because
Also, um, another question. Is there a book list in Color College? Yeah. I always provide that. All the workshops have a resource list. But I swear I gotta I gotta write a book because I'm got so much um, written in the study guides now I'm getting to the point <laughs> where I need to compile my own. Um, okay, here comes some green. I kind of see it in here. So this is neat because the sky color is so complicated. Another quick question. Uh, do you leave the lightest, for this painting, do you leave the lightest part of the moon till last to keep the color clean? Yeah, I, I, di I did do that. And now I'm just kind of marrying everything that I did. Also, back to the packing question. Uh, okay. Do you lay the glassine on top of the pastel, and how do you keep the two layers of the foam core from moving around? Tape them together. Just take them, tape them really tight like a sandwich, and then they, they wor it works really, really well. This is a kind of a greeny gray, but I think it's the right thing for in here. isn't right. No, it isn't either. Where's my blue spruce? Timothy uh, says, I've had those books for some time, uh, but in Color College, Mar Marla guides you progressively, and I prefer the video example walkthroughs rather than just books. So it appears that Tim bought Color College already. Oh, yay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, I, I'm, I, I'm, you know, I, it kind of depends on, you know, just, I, I mean, I think ha having the video it, it affords a, a, a different kind of way of, 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 of seeing and learning, which I think is, you know, something that wasn't available when, you know, and I was... Not really, when I was um, in college, in my college, <laughs> when I learned from Judy Crook, so it's pretty neat to be able to offer that. Okay, so now I'm getting a little involved in this sky here. I want it a little darker over here, and I've got it. And can you remind us what kind of paper you're using? Yeah, this is pastel matte. I 
I think the sky is so, so pretty and so interesting. Let's see if I can get those clouds now. That's going to be challenging too because right here they're really bright. And then they trail off and they get, go into the, the shadow, the kind of grayed. They've got color in them. Okay, there's a little more contrast. This, this right here, that's all about getting the values in the right relationship. Okay. I think it's starting to come together. It's pretty interesting. It's a little dark, a little darker. Kind of a reverse gradations going on here. A little tricky. Oh, but yeah, you know, I'm really glad I didn't go for the um, this bright blue because I don't think it would have worked at all. Because what what I'm seeing now is that the the interesting thing about this um, setup is the this kind of grayed silvery sky. Here's another quick question: Have you ever worked on pastel board, and why do you prefer pastel mat? Okay, yeah, I have worked on board before, and I, I'll tell you, okay, so if you're somebody that likes to do lots of underpainting and lots of um, wet media, I think the boards are great, um, and they, you know, they provide such a, you know, solid, um, stable uh, a ground for that. They don't buckle and all of that, but I don't, um, you know, that's not super... Um, it's not a always thing for me t to do that and so I like to be able to um, I like the paper because I don't have to paint right to the edge I can do this kind of thing and I have plenty of room for mark making whereas if you're working on a board it's a lot more um, um, difficult to do that you can do it but um, it's just different right and um, also, there's something about the boards that they don't have any kind of give to them. And I don't, and just from a tactile perspective, I just don't enjoy working on them as much. And so it's just, it's just that. I really want to play with the, there's some, really fun nuances right right in here that I, I really want to
try to try to get. Sky's kind of coming together nice. Um, what time is it? Oh, okay. Oh, boy. Maybe I'll take a little break here. And then before I come back and finish this up. Ooh, the sky's turning out good. All right, so now um, kind of got that sort of established. I want to get the grass in. The grass is catching some um, light from the, I think it's from the street light. It's maybe not quite that much. Here's a comment slash question. Um, mm -hmm. Just getting started in your acrylics classes via Color College and Seasons. Oh. Can you speak? Uh, can you speak to what might be the benefits of doing a single scene slash composition in both mediums? Presumably doing the same thing in acrylic and pastel. Well, I think that. Yeah. Um, for one thing, in, with with acrylic, you're going to have to mix the colors. Right, so that any any time that you're doing that, it's going to you know be informative. So what what I would suggest if I were doing that, I would do the acrylic first, um, so that when you got to the pastel, you've already like kind of figured out that mixing component. Um, benefits, God, you know, I I'll, I just think that any time the, the the more painting you do, the better you're going to get. The, the different mediums, they all like so crazily inform one another. It's amazing to me um, when I um, feel into that. Um, I'm going to do this a little bit. Just trying to get that. Oh, I know what's going on. I know I'm struggling. I need this to be darker. It's all, everything's so relational. Like, you know, the reason this isn't working is because, it, it, like, I want it to because I don't have what's surrounding it dark enough. And once I do that, then that's going to pop. See that? Just boom that. The solution is usually in, in the value relationships. Whenever you're running into trouble. The color, you know, is, is 
the, the thing with color is you need to be able to separate out those three aspects of every color, what, what's responsible for its appearance. So you can see the value separate from the saturation and, and the hue and like really identify you know, those things out and, and use them independently of one another. That's the trick. Here's another question. Uh, do you have an opinion on Holbein pastels? No, I don't, because I, I really don't have them. And that's not because I don't think that they're good or anything. It's just I don't, um, you know, I haven't gotten around to everything. Um, and, um, you know, and you kind of get, you know, it's really easy and I shouldn't do this, but I, I, I do it too. Whereas I, I, you know, I get into a kind of a, not a rut, but a habit of, you know, purchasing certain things. And, and, you know, once you find a sort of set of things that sort of work for you, it's sometimes um, you don't go outside of it. And um, you no longer use Rembrandt pastels, is that true? I don't. I don't use Rembrandts anymore. Um, I, you know, I started out with them. That's what I started out with, and um, you know, as I um, got more and more experience, I just started kind of phasing them out of my set. Okay, so that's looking kind of cool. I'm gonna, I'm gonna circle back to that area that I want to play with the tree shapes a little bit more because I think it'll be fun. Getting some of my sky holes in. And um, here's a question. Can we purchase the pastel section in the color workshop? That is a no. Separately, no. No, you can't. And the reason for that is I want you guys, I want you pastelists to be um, mixing. I that's one of the things I think when you are a pastelist, it's really, um, I think it can be a liability that we don't mix. We're doing a picking thing and not mixing. And um, no, you cannot. You can do most all of it in pastel if you want. If you want to, you know, skip over the, the good stuff. You could. I wouldn't recommend it. There's a method to my madness, you guys. The reason I have organized things the way I, I have. Okay, now I'm going to make a little bit more commitment to some of this. Oh my God, the 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 um, color college! I thought, boy, it just, it just got to be a, like a rabbit hole because I I just there's so much to it that I I felt like I needed to to do and um, show you guys. So it got. It was ended up being a little bit more than I bargained for in terms of effort. But that's good because I think it I think it's it's definitely a worthwhile thing. Alright, so there's some good stuff going on here. Um, and I wanna push a few things. Let me take a little little quick break, and then I'll work on it for a, a little bit more. And pull, I think, uh, I think, fifteen more minutes, and I can kind of pull it together pretty well.
Let me take a little, little breather. I zoom out here. Wash my hands. Have a sip. All right. Yeah, so I, I hope you guys had a great Thanksgiving. And e even if it was different and maybe difficult and um, mine wasn't sad or anything, it was, it was, it was great. Um, I always try to make the most of such circumstances. But, um, yeah, it's gonna, we're going to be cooped up for a little bit longer, it seems like. So um, more, more painting, more painting for me. More head drawing. <laughs> All of that good stuff. I'm kind of uh, looking forward to it. I pulled, I had kind of put some of that aside when I did the color college, and now I'm pulling that back out and getting back into drawing and sketching and I'm pulling my, my watercolors out and spending some time. I love, I just absolutely love the sketchbooks. So, um, yeah, so there's a watercolor, couple watercolor workshops now, so you can check those out. So, um, yeah, make sure you check out the Black Friday sale. It's only, th only about three weeks, I think, we're doing. And um, best prices that we've ever offered. I really wanted to make this Black Friday Ooh, it's such a crazy time. I wanted to make it really accessible for everyone to, to get. Um, so get all those workshops stock up. All right. What's going on here? Oh, I can see a couple things I need to do. Oh, what else do I want to do? Where's, where's my little, where's my pointer? Is it here? Is it, do you see it, Kevin? See my, see. I have a, I have a, this particular, oh, there it is. It's over on the platform. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> there it is. I just, we, we always use this, this particular brush for pointer. Couple things, um, I definitely want to get the, um, I think the, the, the telephone wires will be good in here. Right in here, I want to pop this. Um, I want to pop the lights in the in the house a little bit. Something's going on there that's not good. I got to fix that. A um, little bit more um, color, I think, on the red. A um, little more complexity of this color. Clean up some of the sky holes on here. Um, soften some of this glow a little bit. A little bit more glow under here. I need some suggestion of branches in here, I think. Maybe playing around with these. So yeah, but I think it's kind of interesting. Let's take a look at it already with the um, with these on it, just, just to get a look. Oh yeah, that's pretty interesting. Look at that low key. Okay, all right. I think I have a path forward that seems to make sense. Where do I want to start with that? Um, I, think, I think I'll add some complexity to that red. And just in a couple different kinds of red, maybe this little bit warmer. That's kind of nice. And I maybe pull some of that over in here, just a hint of this because I think that that might be good. This, yeah, something's not reading right there on the house. It just is not working right there.
it's better just simpler whenever I'm whenever I'm feeling like something isn't working always try to go back to the simpler solution to it if it's not working just simplify always simplify can always add more complexity if, if that doesn't work. I like this painting. I, I like the, the, just the unusual quality of it. The, um, it's got this kind of pop of color that's intriguing without being ominous. And um, you're going to put the wire in at the end, probably? Yeah, I am going to put the wire in. I want to put the wire in. Here's another question. Um, when you sell this painting, do you cut it down with an X-Acto knife to clean it up the margins, or how do you how do you do that? Scissors. Scissors. Great. Scissors. I use. If people ask me that all the time. Do you you know would you use a special cutter? No. I use scissors. You know, people say, um, oh, well, the scissors, you'll dull it because it's the sandpaper. Well, scissors are super expensive. I mean, super inexpensive. Just cheap scissors. And this will be for sale on Daily Paintworks at the in an hour or so. That's kind of a neat one. All right. Um, Someone commented Occam's razor. It's kind of a clever comment. A little uh, deep cut there. So, all you philosophy people. Oh, I don't know what that is. That's Tell the me. the simplest. Uh, the simplest solution is. Is usually the most the most obvious. Oh solution oh is the, oh yeah yeah. Is the one so scissors are the way you cut paper so. Go oh for yeah, it. I'm all about I'm all about simple simple simple. It's funny because I was just talking about simplifying. Yeah, why why make I I. My my whole um painting career is really founded on that idea that um, people ask me a lot about the pay my paper choices and uh, you know kind of I, I don't really get that complicated about it all Not to say that it isn't great to like dig into the the nuance of of painting and the history of painting. I, I like to do that, but when it comes to my my own studio practices, I don't I don't get like super. I try not to get make it harder for myself than it is. I. So when you do trim it down. You trim it down with no extra edge at all, or a little bit. I'm going to trim it for an extra edge because it needs to have a um, frame on it. So it's um, whomever frames it is going to have to deal with that. So I'm going to make sure that that ha it has a little bit, so that it's easy to to do. Oh, look at how pretty that is! It's really nice. It's really, really nice. Okay. Now, 
I think that this moon needs a little TLC. And um, can you talk about how you make the jump from dark night photo to such a vibrant color like we have here? <laughs> she can't quite envision that when she looks at the at the scene. So the, the reference photo is so dark. How do you, how are you pulling so much color? Okay, so the iPhone picked up this red, and it is red, and this maple is also red. Um, and so what I did was I just pushed it a little in that direction. Um, and same thing with this back here, this tree line. I see it as tending towards, leaning towards lavender. So I simply pushed it a little bit more toward the lavender. I mean, that's, you know, I talk about that in Color College, that there's, there's, there's one idea of inventing color. You know, you're making it up. You're using your imagination. You're making it up. There's another thing. You're just pushing, exaggerating it. You know, you're getting some hint of it from what, you're, what you see, and, and then you're just taking off from that and, and using that. And that's essentially what I did here. Um, and it worked out, I think. Now, I want to go up here and do a little TLC up here. Just get some fun stuff. I don't want too hard edges up here. That's awfully nice. Okay, um, I'm, I have in mind to... Let me see if this will work out. I want that to be subtle. I don't want to overdo it, right? Just a teeny bit. That's nice. Okay, windows, they need a little pop. So the way you kind of invented color in this piece, um, I exaggerated the color. So, and you're talking about increasing the chroma and saturation, is that correct? Yeah, I would say that that's accurate. Also, when, when you made those acrylic paintings in the live streams before, um, did you finish those a couple weeks Which ago? Which ones? Oh, I think there was a few that were left undone. Um, I, I finished one of them, um, uh, actually the other day. Um, the long one, the one that... Um, the long format one, I just painted over yesterday. I, I gessoed over it. Um, and the reason I did that was I liked it. I thought it was fine. It was just fine. But just fine isn't, doesn't, you know, float my boat. So it's something that, so it was like ho-hum, you know, it was ho-hum. Like, eh, I don't want this. So I going to start again. I have in mind to do something similar, but but I not 
I wasn't happy with it, so it went in the do-over realm. Also, um, do you ever stand back to look at your paintings? Yeah, I do stand back um, a lot, but not not when I'm doing this. <laughs> yeah. It's important to stand back and look and just get that perspective. And especially if you're working on the large side, you need it's really hard to see. You can't you can't really see what you're doing. Okay. So now let's see a couple more things and then I'm going to wrap this guy up. I think Thanks so much for, for watching you guys and being part of these live streams and allowing me to, to bring these to you. It's really, it's been really, really fun. Okay, I want a couple sort of branches in this. I just want to, that's not the blue spruce, so keep, I'm going to put that away. That's not the right one. I'm not really even sure that's it. I don't even think that's it. Where is my blue spruce? This is it. That's it. All right. See how I'm just kind of stamping this? I'm not really, I'm not drawing. I'm not doing that. That wouldn't really work. It wouldn't fit with what I've already got. So I'm kind of making these little stamps with the pastel. I'm kind of dragging it. Okay, so now the wires. For the wires, I'm getting out this other tool. This is actually a um, Conti stick. It's not totally black. It's almost black. It's kind of gray. Now, I want to come across this right there. But I'm going to put that in light like that because the, the, the light from the moon actually refracts around that. Yeah, I'm not going to do it right. Got to get this right. I want to get, maybe I need to use the blue spruce. Because it gets thicker. But I don't want to draw a line. I'm going to try to avoid it because it, Maybe, maybe I need this. I don't want to draw a, a, a line because I want it to appear as though there's atmosphere intervening. And so I'm going to come back over that. The toughest part of the painting. Okay. Now I'm going to clean this up. Here's just a simple question, um, just out of curiosity. They ask if that if your neighbor will see this painting. No, my neighbor will not see this painting. It's not the neighbor with the derelict vehicle in the road, is it? No. <laughs> no, that's the broken down pickup truck. <laughs> been there for a couple months now. I know, no, it's not that neighbor. They're not, these neighbors are nice neighbors, but they're not that kind of neighbor. They, they know what I do. All, I think most of my close neighbors, they, they know what we do over here, right? I yes. Think they do, but um, Okay, 
this one. I think I got the right tool now. This one's softer. I'm not sure I like this. I'll fix that in a minute. This has got to got to have a little TLC. Right in there, it's a little much. I gotta. I gotta come. I'm gonna come over with this kind of gray, soften it up a little bit. Ugh, making. I'm starting to make a mess. I don't want to do that. Oh boy. I have to clean my fingers off. I have to get my little gradation fixed right in here. Yeah, something like that. It's better. Yeah, I think that starts to work. Change one thing and it changes everything else. You gotta. Alright. I think that's pretty nice. And I. It's got that, that, that glow is pretty good. I think that turned out. All right. And then one last thing and then I'm going to call it good. Okay. So you guys make sure you go to the website and check out the, the sale. It, it is the best sale that we're going to have for a while and um, everything is on sale so it's a great time to stock up. We have 11 workshops now. It's crazy. It's um, 11 workshops plus the monthly um, lessons. So there's a lot to choose from and there's, there's oil, there's watercolor and acrylic and of course pastel. Um, so, um, lots, lots and lots to check out there. Let just get a little bit of this color bouncing around. And I gotta get a little of my kind of signature moves in here. I think this turned out. I think this is one of my favorite live stream pieces. I, I'm surprised. So yeah, if you're interested in this piece, it'll be on Daily Paintworks. I'll put it up and I'm going to go for a walk. It's a beautiful day here. I got to get my walk in while I can and then I'll post it when I get back. So I'll be there.
Yeah, mm -hmm. and definitely we're, we, we, we really have some really fun stuff planned for the holidays. We're strategizing already, like, do I, do I wear my Santa hat? <laughs> <laughs> All that stuff. We're gonna have some really fun, fun things. Um, make sure you sign up for the mini lesson so you can get on the list because you have to be on the mailing list to take advantage of all the fun stuff that we're, we're we have planned um, that, that's coming up. So we're gonna do that. In the last few years, we've done um, I guess three years now. We've done um, the twelve days of Christmas. I posted a little like little um, video on YouTube. Um, for I guess it was 12 days in a row, but we're not going to do that this year. Instead, we're going to do live streams and we're going to just have just more interactive and have them be more fun. So watch for those. But in the meantime, make sure you take advantage of the sale. Um, so it's paintinglessonswithmarla.com. And um, yeah, so um, I really, really made everything affordable, uh, I think, as, as, as affordable as I possibly could so that you guys could take advantage of the lessons during this this time. It's kind of a crazy year, so it's a good time to dig into your painting practice and take um, make the most of it, make it count. Um, that's 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 my plan. All right, okay, you guys, thanks for watching. Um, and really quick, Marla, um, do you want to put up the? Mat? Oh yeah, let's put up the. Maybe we could kitchen. take a look at the pastels as oh, well. Oh sure, Just yeah. There's quite it. a. I use a lot. I use a lot of pastels. Things in here. And you have no plans for any live Oops. workshops uh, anytime soon. No, That's, I do not have not any plans up. for any live workshops anytime soon. I personally do not want to get on a plane. Um, that, that's not my that's not my idea of fun right now. Um, and I um, only would do it if it was really fun and safe. And so that's not in my. That's not on my docket. Oh, that looks pretty good. Yeah, that's neat. That's a neat one. I just, I love, I love this glow. Woo, I love, right, that's really neat. And this, um, so it could be fun. It might be fun to, to do one thing, to do, um, um, let's see. I can, let me see if I can get it to go. My neighbor's car. That looks a little bit more like a car. Like that? Like automatically it's a car? <laughs> Just like that? That's kind of fun. Um, I mean, that's, that's it. That's, yeah. I think that's pretty neat. Right. Also, let's take a look at those pastels. I'll Ooh, there's in. a lot of them. I'll zoom in here. Let me see. Um, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-four, twenty-six. Like I'm gonna say, there's forty. That's a lot. That's a lot. But it's got a it's got a narrow value range on on average, but then it's got these, you know, contrasts. So it's got, you know, on the whole you got to you got to have sticks that have a really broad value range. It's also got a really broad hue range from the red to the green to the yellow. So it's the it this kind of thing it does take a lot a lot of sticks. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, I think it's it's fine. Just gotta control them. All right. There's 